Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the mode event. Last time, we found out something special. We were able to go into the mode machine, and we were able to enter the correct password, which was needed more than once, in order to unlock the secret file in the mode machine that apparently Vito has kept hidden. Kept hidden right out in plain sight, even though, well, no one knew how to operate the mode machine. When we first started using it, we didn't have an idea of what we needed to do with it. But since we got the password and entered it twice, we were able to find out all sorts of secrets, though we have no idea what they mean. But maybe it'll become clear as we go on. Let's continue on with the party of the year. The chat had to make a decision on who they were going to talk to next. Our choices were Jack or Mia. We had put off talking to these people because we wanted to get the dome first, first of all. Uh, but in addition, we ended up going to the mode machine, which the chat actually did not expect that we were going to do. And since we unlocked its secrets, they were very eager to get to Jack Nietzsche and tell him what we found, because Jack, we know, is searching for some kind of dirt on Vito and Rial. And maybe we can find some way to let him know that we found some possible evidence against them. Some way of doing this only communicating through red, green, and blue. Maybe we can do it. Let's find out. So what do you say? You look like you're in the appropriate party mood. As we always are. You know, it's funny that the first time we had this conversation with Jack, we almost ended up fighting him. And now everyone is just so eager to let him in on the news. So they went with green, that we were very much in the party mood, especially now. It's not really my scene. I feel like I don't fit in. I, uh, I'm actually an art collector, and I don't get out to these fashion things very often. Oh, Jack, you're a terrible liar, and everyone knows it. Rial was talking on his phone, knowing that you're a cop undercover. No one's buying your story, Jack. The chat decided that we were going to go blue on that, since we know he's a filthy liar to begin with. I don't know. It feels like there's something really phony going on here. It's like nobody is who they are actually pretending to be. I think Jack probably knows a lot about that. Probably knows something about that. The chat decided we were going to go green on that. We were going to agree with Jack. Yeah, that's strange, isn't it? Who do you think around here is not who they pretend to be? I saw you talking to Vito over there. Do you know him well? Well, we were talking to Vito, and I think that voice clip was something new uh, when we had our last conversations with Jack I think it was before talking to Vito so we never got that before he never noticed us talking to Vito because we had not talked to him before speaking with Jack we had this time so now he wants to know if we know Vito well well let's tell Jack the truth we only had the one conversation with him at least in this lifetime in previous realities we got very close to Vito but as far as this one goes no we don't know him too well He's a fascinating guy. I get the feeling that there's uh, a lot more going on here than meets the eye. Did he tell you anything unusual or interesting about what he does? Uh, we found out something about his dark techno religion, if that's what you mean. I think that counts as something uh, as what's going on here. So let's say yes, he did tell us something about that. I've actually heard some strange rumors. Why don't you tell me what you know? The chat was all for it. They decided that, yeah, we're going to tell him what we know. We want to find some way of letting him know about what we found in the mode machine. But it might take a little bit of time to get to that point. After all, we can only speak in colors. And this color we're picking is green. Wow, a secret file. That sounds interesting. Maybe I should check this out. Sounds like fun. Well, that took a lot sooner than I might have expected. We just came out and blurted it out that we were using the mode machine, playing the game, and we found some kind of secret information, secret file, inside the machine. We don't even know Jack is a cop yet. We're already telling him this. The chat was green on this. They wanted to keep going on with this line of conversation. However, we could not go on with that line of conversation, because Jack decides to cut us off and start sizing us up, as he's done before. We've seen that before. The chat decided that we were going to go blue. Just imagine the party crasher giving Jack that exact look right back at him. Listen, I like you. 
I don't know why sometimes I get a feeling and I just have to run with it. And I'm about to take a pretty big chance with you right here. Are you ready for it? The chat was all for it because they knew it was coming. They knew that Jack was about to deputize us in this investigation. And now that we can actually provide some kind of help in the form of the mode machine, as well as potentially redeeming ourselves for uh, ending up screwing over Jack in his fight with Rial last time, they were all too eager to say green, to accept, and to help out Jack in his investigation. Listen, I can't believe this, but but I'm ready to confide in you. This is going to be risky. And I want you to, well... Actually, no, no. Forget it. All right? We've seen that before, too. He has second thoughts. This time round, however, I think we have a stronger position. I don't know why he would, he would be having second thoughts, since we, in a few minutes, have, has uncovered more information on Vito and Rial than Jack has in his whole investigation. So we're going to confidently say no, that we're not going to allow Jack to just pull away right now, just as he's about to confide on us. Get closer, Jack. Get closer. You can trust us. Are you sure? Because I don't know. This could be dangerous. The chat was so very sure. They were all for danger. Okay, you asked for it. I'm a cop and I'm undercover. I've been trying to get a bead on this Vito guy now for quite some time and it's not panning out. I've been watching he and his friends all evening long and I'm getting nothing. I ran with a suit and the whole works for this soiree. Listen, if I don't get something soon, I'm going to be pounding the traffic beat again with my badge up my butt. I'm desperate. I really need your help. Will you do it? Yeah, the chat was all ready to say yes that whole time. He didn't even have to convince us. Chat wanted to go green for a long time now with Jack. You better be sure this isn't a game. The chat was positive that they were playing no game. They knew the risks involved, the dangers involved, that we might be knocked out by, by Dome and then left, to, left on the floor to miss Vito's final performance. It might happen again since we're taking this path, but that was a risk the chat was willing to take. So they went with green. Okay, here's the story. Vito's been spreading the rumor that he's involved with some kind of a cult called the Edom. Kind of a Freemason thing with uh, secret gland shakes bent on world dominance. My sources tell me that's a lot of crap. He's actually involved with some kind of a new cult called the Meadow. Out of Japan via South America. They deal in some new synthetic narcotic called Demo. I know it sounds pretty far-fetched, but have you seen some of the characters this guy hangs around with? Like Riel. This guy's a half-tribal type of guy, a mohawk, wearing a bizarre-looking tuxedo tonight. We've been trying to pin drug smuggling on this guy for quite some time and haven't been able to do it. If he's involved, I know there's drugs involved here. Then there's uh, Mia. Mia Tesla, Vito's girlfriend. I know she's involved here somewhere. Yeah, we've heard this before. This was the this is what he said the first time we got involved with Jack's investigation. However, we have reason to believe that what he's saying is probably not true. He's saying that this whole rumor about Vito being with the Edom is false, and he's actually with another cult called the Meadow, but we didn't see a mention of the Meadow in the Mode Machine. There was mentions of Edom. Apparently, edom has been around for a long time. If the mode machine is to be believed, why would that information be there if it was false? We also saw some information in there about Rial's drug trade. So that seems like the most immediate piece of information that Jack should be looking at, if he's trying to nail, nail Rial on drugs. So the chat wanted to go with Green, just try to be positive or agree with him on something, any of that really. They just wanted to say yes to Jack. What? Oh, yeah. I knew there was something going to break on this case pretty soon. And I knew it had to involve that Ed kid. He's been under Vito's wing now for a couple of years. Some kind of a boy genius. He was in graduate school by the time he was 12. Listen, what I'll do is I'll meet you over at the uh, terminal by the exit. I have something I have to do right now. All right? All right. So that conf Oh, and these two are crying again. We'll never know what she's crying about. 
We can never talk to them. But that conversation ended in a completely different way. Because now Jack knows about the mode machine. He knows Ed is involved somehow. And honestly, the chat was not thrilled at the prospect that the gorgeous Ed might end up being arrested by Jack. No, Ed's innocent. He's a good, he's a good kid. You don't need to arrest him, Jack, says the chat. However, if Ed is involved, he might have to go down with Vito and Rial. In any case, this was a positive conversation because now Jack is saying that he's going to meet us later at the Mode Machine. He has some things to do, but things are going different. Things are going different. We're going down a different path than last time, at least so far. Unfortunately, at this point, the game crashed. So, uh, I had to restart the game and play back through the, to the crash point. Uh, I had not saved, I believe, because saving was actually causing the game to crash as well. Several things can cause mode to crash. It's uh, at least as playing it the way I am. I'm playing it through Windows 3.1, which is installed in DOSBox. Maybe on genuine DOS, maybe things went a bit smoother, but I can't say that for sure. The game had crashed in any case. So I went back all the way through the game, and then we got up to backstage. Wonder if anyone's in the dressing room. Yeah. Pretty sure we've seen that already. We decided that we were going to speak to the manager. We've had a couple conversations with the manager backstage, but they've been both very short and haven't really gone anywhere, so we were going to give this another try. We might remember what this guy was all about. He no, is very stressed. He's very tense. Everything's going bad. His talent is not showing up. He has to fill in with local people who are probably not in the league of the people he was expecting. Well, I don't care how inflamed it is. You could at least make a few phone calls. And then we come well, barging yeah, into his office. We're the stuff. last thing he well, I needs. you and Vito had a relationship. Well, yeah, well, I hate him too, but this is business. Like, I gotta go. Yeah, well, the same to you, and I hope it festers. I'm up to my naughty bits in the most insanely organized show I've ever been involved with. Two minutes to my next runway catastrophe if I don't get back there and hold their wet little hands and I have no idea who in the hell you are supposed to be. Now, how do you think that makes me feel? So I believe in previous conversations, uh, we had said red and we had said green. I don't think we had said blue yet. And that's what the chat wanted to do. We wanted to just stand there and sort of shrug our shoulders and say that we don't really know or maybe we don't care how that makes you feel us being in your office at this moment of crisis. So we gave him some blue. Oh, well, there's something so reassuring about your apathy. <laughs> You're someone after my own heart. But, unfortunately, I can't chuck all of this fame and fortune to come party with you. <laughs> well, he is just going to ignore us as well. I guess that's only fair, since we didn't give him much to go on. The chat decided that we were going to give him some green, try to pep him up, you know, get him into a conversation. Things are going looking bad for him right now, but things could be worse, right? Now that's a tempting offer, and you're a dear for asking, but as a consummate professional, I must graciously decline. <laughs> but just tell me one thing, is it just heaps of fun out there? I wonder what it was we offered him. I mean, I'm not entirely sure what we're saying it sometimes, like before with Ed, when he said that he is not an ecstasy fiend like these other drones and we were coming on way too strong. I still wonder what we said to him to get that response. So now I'm also wondering what it is we just offered the stage manager. He's asking us if it's loads of fun out there. The chat was actually incredibly, incredibly torn about that. They just could not make up their minds on if it was fun out there. It wasn't fun? Is it fun? Will it be fun? Has it been fun in previous incarnations of the mode event and the party crasher? So many questions to consider. So many variables that could come into play. The votes went up and up and up, and yet they stayed rather even as the party crasher stood there with hundreds of people in the brain arguing, trying to figure out, is it fun out there? Is it fun? Do any of us really have fun? 
Would we have fun after this is over? Did we have fun before this began? Does that party out there even exist? Maybe it's all in our minds. Maybe nothing exists outside of this backstage office. With you and I, together. Maybe those people you were talking to on the phone don't exist. The talent you expect, they didn't show up because they were never even alive. They were never born. How could they be born? There's nothing else outside of this room except you and me. And so the chat went on, trying to decide whether or not it was fun out there. Was it? Maybe. Do I even know what fun is? Eventually, it came down to a very close decision. As the party crasher stood there, staring off into space, looking not at the stage manager, but through him, trying to figure out, was it fun? The chat finally decided, yeah, yeah, it, it is loads of fun out there. Well, I guess I'm kind of sorry I'm missing all the party and all, but someone's got to keep all the crap back here from spilling out into the hall and soiling all the hoi polloi. <laughs> Speaking of which, I've really got to get back to work. You're really going to have to go now. Well, I mean, he's telling us to leave, but he's been polite about it. I mean, he's been completely reasonable about telling us why we need to leave. I can't fault him for that. However, the chat decided that we weren't done with him yet. I mean, come on, let's get... let's get to know each other, stage manager. We've been through several lives and we still don't know who you are. So they decided to go with Blue. We're just going to stand here, lean against your door, just stare at you as you're working on that laptop. Well, I'm glad you understand. Now do me the big favor and take a little trip to the other side of the door that you just came in. Will you do that for me? All right, we still do have the color bar. However, the chat decided that, okay, he's been polite about it, and it seems that this is probably just going to lead to him getting mad and throwing us out of the office, which is how all of our other conversations with him have ended. So let's just make the first move and leave ourselves. Leave with dignity. Okay. So now that we've done that, we really only had one more choice. Don't even need to take a vote this time. Because the only thing we can do at this point... Well, we could watch the stage. We've seen that already. Crying couple. Still crying! Still not having a good time. The bar is empty. There's Rial, but he doesn't want to talk to us. Okay, there she is. The chat decided... Well... That saved Mia for last, I suppose. They were more interested in talking to the other characters first, and talking with Mia in another lifetime got us into trouble, and got us thrown out of the mode event very early. So they were quite skittish about talking with Mia Tesla again, for fear of the wrath of Vito. But we've already spoken with Vito. Let's talk with Mia. The immersion, it's helical, it's regressive. The DMT is reintegrating with the pyroglutamate to create a kind of elastic envelope that is causing me to blur and tatter around the edges. It's like the shadow of lightning on mica. It's like... Are you trying to get my attention? Can any of us really get anyone's attention? Does attention even exist? What is attention? What can you pay attention to? Me? Maybe I don't exist. You? Maybe you'd... Okay, so the chat was very close about this one as well. Eventually, they decided that they were going to answer red, and they were going to say, No. No, we're just standing here. What are you talking about? I'm accosted by a stranger. This person is not familiar to me. There's a certain immediate animal attraction I cannot deny. They're watching me record my diary, apparently unembarrassed to be eavesdropping on such personal activity. I am imagining them naked. So we remember this. She's still trying to get one up on us by making us feel awkward, by continuing her journal log, talking about imagining us naked, right in front of us. The chat decided that we were not impressed. We were going to give it some blue. We were just going to stand here with our arms crossed. Maybe our head cocked slightly to the side, as if to say that this is nothing we have not heard before. Especially at this party. 
Do you want to sit? The chat decided that, yeah, we wanted to sit. I mean, we came here to talk to her. We might as well, right? Otherwise, why did we come over here in the first place? So sit. And we did. There's something I want you to read. Tell me what you think. Right. Remember this, right? Her monkey uh, little poem. It's a lyric for a song I'm writing. I'm still working on it. Okay, that's enough. So what you think? This is a test. Right, it was a song lyric. Well, the chat knew what her test was all about. They were on to her because we've seen this before. She doesn't know that. But of course, we know what she's testing us. She thinks it's terrible. She wants to know if we're just going to flatter her or if we're going to tell her the truth. So the chat, of course, decided that we were going to give her some red. We we're going to we're going to ask her, what is she even thinking? Writing a lyric like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Just throw your laptop out the window right now. Yeah, right. Cooking in a pressure pot. <sighs> That's as bad as it gets. Well, you passed that test. So I think you're ready for something a little more adventurous. Check this out. Okay, let's check it out. This might be different from what we saw last time. I'm not sure. It's part of a novel I'm working on. Kind of surreal. You look like you're enjoying. You don't have to memorize it. Okay, that's enough. Opinions? Well, don't you have any more on the subject of bodily bliss for us to read about? Or is that all there is? Well, the chat decided that this was probably her actual piece of writing that she was proud of, that she actually thought was good. So if we wanted to continue on this conversation, the chat decided that we were going to say it was green, that it was, it was very good, Mia. I'm all hot now. Thank you very much. So we went with green. Good. That's what I was looking for. A little erotic enthusiasm. I hope you won't think me too for it. But you want to take a sauna? When it comes to erotica, we are the most enthusiastic party crasher. Or at least the chat was very enthusiastic about taking this sauna. Well, not everyone. Because a lot of people felt that perhaps we should not go back in there with her. But enough people felt that we should head back into the sauna with Mia Tesla. We've been there with her before, and it just ended with her walking out. Uh, maybe things can be different this time. Ah, oh, yes, I like it. Steamy and still. Do you fall in love easily? We remember this question. The chat, even though they followed her into the sauna, decided that they were going to play standoffish. And they were going to say, no, we don't fall in love easily. Just lean back in our sauna. We're all about ourselves, not other people. No one's going to take advantage of us. Least of all you, Mia Tesla, is what the chat was saying as they decided to go red. Would you make an exception in my case? The chat decided that we were going to perhaps put our hands in front of our chest, you know, weave our fingers together, maybe roll our eyes a bit as if we're thinking about it, and then shrug. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd make an exception for you, Mia. So we gave her some blue. I know what you mean. What is love? Everybody talks about it. Nobody really does it. Not really. Do you think you could fall in love with me? That seems like a contradiction. No one knows what love actually is, yet you're asking us if we think that we could fall in love with you. I don't see this question making sense. Then again, we do know from previous playthroughs that we are some kind of tiny man-child god, so maybe we could possibly know what love actually is. The chat decided that we were still going to be a little bit standoffish. We were going to be... We're, we're not going to commit ourselves to Mia Tesla, I think is the message that the chat wanted to make, even though we're sitting in the sauna with her. We have only known her for a few minutes, though. So they decided to go with blue. 
You're not trying. Was this a mistake? Yeah, she's right. We're not really trying. If we're just going to be neutral to everything, then we're not very interesting, are you? Are we? I mean, we learned that lesson with Vito. You tried being neutral with him. He didn't think too much of it. Because Vito wants extreme people. He wants interesting people. We went into the sauna with Mia. She wants things to be hot. We're being cold. We're being distant, standoffish. So maybe that's not the right thing to do with Mia. The chat decided that we were going to answer red. We were going to say, no, this wasn't a mistake. So let's do that. Good. Because I like you. I like you a lot. Why don't you get closer? Mia Tesla seems to make snap judgments. Then again, everyone at the mode event seems to. Everyone seems to trust us. Everyone seems to like us. For some reason. The chat decided that they were very much green on this, on getting closer. We've done this before. We know how this goes. But we were decided that we were going to get closer anyway. So we gave it some green. Ooh. I see you know how to come to a point. I like that. Well now. Something is very different. The mode, uh, sorry, the dome icon has appeared. We saw the dome icon once before. We were talking with Vito Brevis during the previous mode event. The dome icon appeared and we zapped him in the face with it. And we had some kind of experience with Mr. Brevis. Well, the dome icon has appeared now. We've been in this situation with Mia before, and we know that if we pick wrong, she's going to stand up and walk away. But we didn't have this last time. Well, the chat was pretty much unanimous in deciding that we were going to use that dome. It was barely even necessary to take a vote. It's time to use the dome. See what happens. And just like before... Zap right in the face. Oh, you're such a darling. Let me return the favor. All right, goodbye. Yeah, then she she just she just stands up and leaves anyway. I mean, even though we just did that, she just gets out of there. The chat was quite uh was quite amused by our shared dome experience with Mia. We've had one with Vito, now we've had one with Mia. And we see why Mia was disappointed with us and left in the previous time we were in the sauna with her. It was because that was what she was expecting. She wanted to explore the sensorium, and now we know what that is. Apparently that was exploring the sensorium. So I think that's about enough for this part of the mode event. It's been a little it's been a little eventful. We had the conversation with Jack. Jack now knows about the file in the mode machine. He's going to check it out and we're going to check in with him later on. We talked with the manager, but that really didn't go anywhere. But hey, we finally got to do something with Mia. We really couldn't figure out what the purpose of her conversation was. It didn't really seem to lead anywhere last time, but now we finally found out. We had to get the dome. We had to go in there. And then we had the dome experience with Mia. So count off Vito and count off Mia. Is there anyone else at this party that we can zap with this dome? Well, we know not Rial. Let's not zap Rial, because we know what happens if we zap him. He zaps us back in the bad way. But maybe there are other people that we can give some dome loving to. Maybe we'll find out next time. See you then. <laughs>